freshman Christy Thomas is Georgia's only senior. She had a double-double against Purdue, but only had three shots in the second half. It's going to be important for LSU to get her the ball. Simone Augustus gets the ball. No matter what you try to do, Kara, she's been putting it in the basket. She's had an incredible NCAA tournament thus far, leading the entire tournament in scoring and shooting 67% from the field. How about that for an offensive player for the other team's defensive game plans every game are to shut her down? And no one has done it yet. We are underway in Seattle, Georgia, as a three seed wearing their home whites. LSU, the fourth seed in their away purples. LSU starting out in their man-to-man -man defense that really stifled the Texas offensive attack on Saturday. We knew Christy Thomas would get her a hand in the face, but she shoots it over Willis. Take it over Wendell Jones. Once again, as we've seen all year for Christy, Christy Thomas, she usually has a sizable size advantage in the paint. For Georgia. Christy is six foot five. Anika Hodge is one of the two weapons that Georgia was focusing on in their shoot around. Gets her first shot in the front basket. Obviously, you're going to focus on Augustus and also Hodges. They were very much concentrating on them. Rebecca Rousey, only a freshman. Turnaround no good. Wendell Jones boards it for LSU, and they want to run it. Well, that's one thing that Coach Pokey Chapman talked about in the shootaround. She said, we're going to run, and we're going to run all, all night. It might not pay dividends early on, but we might get tired legs in the last five minutes of both halves. Georgia only has nine players that they do. And Hodges misfires on that jump shot. And he's hard to incredible freshman guard, lot of confidence, redeemed herself nicely on Saturday after a key technical foul against Purdue. Thomas, again, misses Augustus with her first rebound. See the game plan early on for Georgia offense was get the ball inside to our bigs. That's where they feel like they can have a good advantage. And Augustus drove right to the basket, but the shot was nowhere close. Sherelle Baker, just short. Rebound battle for Rousey. Tips it out, and Georgia gets a fresh 30. A very important component for this team and just a freshman. Inside Thomas, yes, and the foul. I'll tell you what, Pam, four straight possessions. Three of those times down to Christy Thomas, one into Rebecca Rousey. Andy Landers has made it clear he wants to get it inside to the base. Christy Thomas, key fundamental as a post player, keeps the ball high and gets fouled. You look at that nice pass by Sherelle ba Baker. Christy Thomas going to the line for the end. Thomas completes the three-point play, and Coach Landers wanted her to get about 12 to 14 shots the other night against Purdue. They did a great job in the first half. She was four for five from the floor, but only one for three from the floor in the second half. Well, that's huge tonight. Christy Thomas has to touch the ball throughout the whole game. Georgia cannot afford to go through stretches without her touching. Nika Johnson missing on her first jump shot of the game. Johnson a dynamo at only five foot three. All she's done in this tournament is get 37 assists in three games. Thomas turning on Willis, missing rebound to Jones. Missy Johnson pushing a good job by Georgia to get back. Rousey helps out. That's not Jones's shot, so she passes it up. See, Augustus on Baker, huge height advantage, and Simone says, I'll take it and I'll make it. Augustus with her first basket, the third team AP All-American. As Kara said, an incredible 67%. That's something you expect from somebody like Katie Teamster, a 6 8 <laughs> kid, not someone who takes as many outside shots as Augustus. First shot taken by Kendrick is off the mark. LSU down one with the ball. LSU lost to Georgia 80 to 74 the end of January in Athens. LSU was down 18 in that game, tied it up with a minute to go. And then Georgia hit a lot of free throws to pull away for the win. And Augustus hits another one over Baker. He's not tall enough to guard her. Well, it's such a tough matchup problem for Sherelle Baker. Not because of her inability to stay in front of her. It's because of that height advantage. And Simone Augustus can get her shot off pretty much on anyone in the country because of that size. We saw Sherelle Baker do a terrific job on Sharika Wright of Purdue. But Augustus is a whole different story when it comes to offensive ability. Shot clock at five. And the freshman fires away for three. Janice Hardrick. I love Janice Hardrick. She's got just a great temperament. She's really the emotional leader for this Bulldogs team and comes up with big shot after big shot. Five key points.
points down the stretch against Purdue, including a game tying three that set up Alexis Kendrick's game winning shot. No fear for that freshman. LSU, that's Willis, baseline, no good. And Hardrick gets the rebound. Georgia has guards who really can all rebound the, well, the ball well. Shot off the mark, rebound is going to go to LSU. When we come back, Bokey Chapman, Chapman's team down two. Nice Harley. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to get one of those myself, but I uh, spent the $64.95 on a killer dinette set. It was tough, you know. It was Harley, dinette set, Harley, dinette set. The all-new Sportster is here. Went with a dinette set. The bike you've always wanted starts at $64.95. Hey, LeBron. Oh, what up, Thurs? Brother, how about a toy in your new crib? Oh, come on in. This is my bedroom? Right, right, king size water bed. Game room. Plasma screen, blah, blah, blah. And this is the kitchen. Whoa! Oh, no, you didn't. Crisp, clean, ice cold, lemon, lime, Sprite, always at your fingertips. Check it out. <laughs> you crying? It's just so beautiful. Show up, my motto. Can I brother get a minute? If you want to get a jump on spring, you can. And if you want to do it now and pay for it later, you can. Right now at the Home Depot and Expo Design Center, you'll get no payments and no interest for 12 months on everything in the store. Just use your consumer credit card. Or if you don't have one, open a new credit card account and you'll get 10% off your first purchase store-wide. You can save up to $200. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Honey, come quick. There's French toast on the TV. Well, get a sponge and clean it off. No, it's an ad on TV for Denny's French Toast Slam. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, and just $4.99. Let's go. I don't feel like cooking. Ah, you never feel like cooking. CAA Women's Basketball Championship, Minnesota versus Duke at 7, Stanford versus Tennessee at 9, tomorrow night on ESPN. Welcome to ESPN's Week of Madness, presented by Harley Davidson. Welcome back to Seattle, where Georgia has an early two-point lead over LSU. Pokey Chapman, in her 13th year as an assistant, the acting head coach, as Sue Gunner continues. You think he's a clutch player, or is this just because he's been around so long he's got the experience? I think a little combination of both. I mean, I think uh, with Bjorkman, you know he's he's solid. He, he's going to... Again, he's never been... And he has plenty... Coach Gunner watching on television. Andy Landers has been to the fi Final Four five times previously with Georgia, but has yet to win the national championship. His team tries to get there one more time. Simone Augustus turning on Baker. That's off the mark. Rebound to Hardrick. It's been interesting to note the defensive scheme that of both these teams early on. A lot of sagging man from both sides really using the scouting report, playing off those penetrators so that they don't have an advantage. Thomas with the turn, in and out, rebound to Jones. Thomas now two of five from the floor, so she's gotten five shots in the first five minutes. Well ahead of the pace they would like, which is good. Good to get her looks. Hodges, up, over, awkward shot. Jones cleans up and gets fouled. These two teams play in the SEC, and it's amazing, mirror images to say the least, how close their statistics are. They met only one time during the regular season. Georgia was the winner at home in Athens. In that game, Simone Augustus had 24 points, and he's 125 to lead the Lady Bulldogs. Jones heads to the line, the 65% free throw shooter, hits her first shot. Here's a very important player for Georgia. Jessica Pierce checking in for Rousey. Gives him a whole different dynamic. Well, she does. She's very keen, averaging about 15 points a game off the bench for the Bulldogs. 
And the, the reason I think she's such a key player tonight is because LSU might double down on Christy Thomas some, and she has the ability to hit that perimeter shot to keep the defenses on her. She's had a tremendous NCAA tournament, 17 points in the first round against Liberty, followed that up with 18 against TCU, and then the 10 points and nine rebounds against Purdue. But misses that shot, the follow is good by Thomas. Seven points for Christy already. Seven of George's ten points. The other three coming from Hardrick. Augustus, you can't keep her down for long. Simone Augustus, this looks just like Saturday night when she torched the Longhorns for 29 points. She's pretty much getting whatever shot she wants right now. Thomas now at the free throw line. This is that shot. It goes out to the Lady Bulldogs. We're going to take a look at Christy Thomas right here, working the offensive glass on the Jeff Tapir shot. Gets the rebound. You got to stay with the box out if you're the LSU post player there. Thomas, so important. Very important for her to stay out of foul trouble. Got into a little bit of trouble against TCU in the second round. TCU almost came back, blocked back by Willis. Shot clock at nine. And the freshman again, Hardrick, comes through. There's not any situation that seems to face her. These little guards for Georgia, you have to just love watching them play because they play with so much heart, and they're not scared of anything. Hardrick, second team All-SEC is a freshman, unanimous on the All-SEC freshman team. Very fun-loving kid. Tamika Johnson gets on the score sheet for the first time. Technically a senior, but she will be back next year as uh, she came in as a partial qualifier, but has made academic progress. And she announced on Selection Sunday, NCAA granted her the extra year of eligibility. And yes, she will be back for one more year for LSU. Willis, hacking Pierce. You mentioned that Janice Hardrick probably uh, just does things, comes up big in any situation. Well, here, Georgia's down five at this point. Nice baseline drive. Georgia down three. The huge three over Katie Geralds. Check out the emotion. We talked about her being the emotional leader of this team. And that came after a crucial technical foul on Janice Hardrick where we thought it might have put the game away. For, for Purdue, and she comes back big to tie, bring her team back and tie it up. You see the line, and it, it does not speak, as Kara mentioned, to that technical, but a lot of freshmen might get down at that point. Andy Landers actually almost took some of the blame because he told her during the previous timeout to be very aggressive and can't hit the ball in the, uh, when, the, when it's out of bounds being held by the inbounder. But uh, fortunately, it didn't turn out so badly, Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Pam, I want to ask Kara a question. Kara, both these ball clubs throughout the year they are a force it to the corner defensive scheme but in the night ball game they're forcing people to the middle how difficult is that adjustment to make as a player in one game's time well i think that is going to be very difficult because it's second nature for these players to force to the corner corner that's ingrained in their system and so what they're going to have to do i think early on you'll see that but as the game wears on we might see some forces back toward the baseline hey care the other thing we talked about this morning the shoot around is tamika johnson knocking down shots because they're giving her a cushion. If she, if she can get inside and finish, that's a huge key for LSU. Well, that is, and, and they're going to play off Tamika Johnson because of, of her ability to penetrate, especially in transition. So if she could knock down that perimeter shot, that bodes well for LSU. We saw an example of the dribble penetration, but Tamika was unable to hit that layup. She's one of three from the floor so far. Sherelle Baker, her jump shot is off the mark, and Willis boards it for LSU. Georgia leading this game by three. The winner heads on to New Orleans and the final four. Baton Rouge, by the way, about 60 miles from New Orleans, and just a little bit of a road trip for the Lady Tigers if they get there. Shot clock at 10. Augustus backs away, and little Tamika Johnson hits the jump shot. Well, that's a good sign for LSU, and you see Hardrick sagging off, and what you do is when you sag off and you get that ball screen, that allows Tamika Johnson to get her jumper off right there at the free throw line. On the season, averaging just under 13 points a game and over eight assists. Three NCAA games, three double-doubles for Tamika Johnson in this tournament. Pierce turning over Willis, in and out. And this is a player who plays better, Pierce, if she gets her shots to fall early. A big confidence player, and so far, she is not, she's 0 for 2 from the floor. Rebound to LSU, fresh 30. Yeah. 
Vince just trying to make a cut on Baker, who was sticking with him. Baker listed at 5'8", Augustus at 6'1". Good defense by Hardrick. Got her hand into the passing lane to disrupt that pass. We'll be back to Seattle. Units per transaction, uh, then we could up the margins by a very sizable... Uh And for most of us, that means losing weight. And now you can do it in half the time. Introducing the Nautilus Tread Climber, a machine so effective, we guarantee results in just 30 days. One short workout on the Tread Climber burns twice as many calories as treadmills, bikes, or stair steppers. The secret is the unique dual treadle that lets you step up as you walk forward, so you do twice the work in one effortless motion. Tread Climber is easy on the joints because it's as simple as walking. Pick up the phone, call and ask for your free video or DVD that tells you all about the Tread Climber. Get on with your life in half the time. Just three short workouts a week on the Tread Climber will get you in the best shape of your life. Now you can own a Tread Climber with no money down and affordable monthly payments. Call us for a free video or DVD or visit us at NautilusDirect.com today. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by Harley-Davidson. It's time to ride. We are in Seattle. A terrific look at Puget Sound, one of the ferries bringing folks into downtown Seattle. We had two of the most spectacular weather days we could have hoped for. About 70 degrees and sunny today in this beautiful city in the Pacific Northwest. And we've got a beautiful game so far. LSU tra trailing Georgia. Shot clock at five. I don't think they realize it. Augustus takes it with two on the shot clock and hits it. I think she realized it. Of course. How dare I, <laughs> Pam, uh, Pam, I listened to that last time out for Andy Landers of Georgia. He talked about defending Tamika Johnson and Kara, listen to this. He said, gals, listen to me. When she's above the three-point line, give her a cushion. But we can no longer give Tamika Johnson 12-foot shots in this basketball game. The entire timeout was how to defend Tamika Johnson for LSU. A big concern right now for Andy Landers. Well, I agree. And, and as Christy Thomas scores, that's got to be a big uh, emphasis for LSU on defense. On and this is remarkable, Kara. This is all-time in one NCAA tournament. She already has 39 assists. Laquan Stallworth had 47, but that was when her team went all the way to the finals in uh, Boston, Tennessee. A few years ago, in 1998, and Tamika Johnson, in just three games and a little bit, is sneaking up on that record. Unbelievable. Christy Thomas already into double figures. And she has 10 after that last three-point play. Baker loses it, but it is knocked out of her hand. Stays the Bulldogs' way as Tilly Willis comes back in. A reminder, we will be hearing shortly from Sue Gunter, who joins us on the phone from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I know she's got to be just tied up in knots watching this team. It's got it's tough on the bench, but I can't imagine. She's three, you know, like 2,800 miles away and watching her team try to get to the final four. So we look forward to talking to Coach Gunter soon. Chambers to Pierce. Pierce has yet to hit a shot, and that one goes in and out. Pierce now 0 for 3 from the floor. Augustus 2 alone. Andy Landers is going to go nuts on that. 
Well, that's a huge defensive miscue for Georgia. If there's one player on LSU that you have to know where she is at all times, it's Simone Augustus, especially in transition. She has 10 points, 5 of 8 shooting, and during shoot-around today, they had players that in shirts, they call them. They had Simone Augustus and Danica Hodges, and you couldn't lose them. Christy Thomas loses the ball off her fingertips. We are tied up at 17 apiece in the West Region Final. Tamika Johnson, after a quick break, comes back in. She does not take many breaks, averaging over 33 minutes a game for LSU. Johnson is from New Orleans, her hometown. So an extra treat, obviously, playing the Final Four in your hometown. That is what she is playing for tonight. Corey Chambers all over Hodges. Augustus is now guarded by Kendrick. Shot off the mark. Rebound is taken by Johnson. And LSU gets a fresh clock. Johnson directs traffic and then takes the shot herself. LSU is making a living off of Georgia's sagging man because they're coming up with a post for that ball screen. That Georgia defender is too low and is not able to challenge that perimeter shot. Six points for Tamika, and LSU is up by two. Hardrick will take that shot, and again, she hits it. Eight points for the freshman, a couple of threes. No fear for Jimmy Hardrick. Absolutely not. Very loosey-goosey in practice today. Great pass, but Willis blows another potential assist for Johnson. And Hardrick, during practice, they actually came up and grabbed Andrew Landers, was punching him a couple of times, put his arm around her neck. I have never seen a pitcher do that to Andrew Landers. And he went violent. He's a freshman. Thomas wheels, does not get the bounce, and little Tamika gets the rebound. Her second of the game. Hodges loses it momentarily. Hodges into Augustus, who got terrific inside position on Kendrick, and a foul is called against Georgia. And every time that Georgia goes man to man, Simone Augustus is going to have a smaller perimeter player on her. So I would anticipate LSU to look for that post up on the block because Simone Augustus can do so much when she gets the ball down there. Well, Starwalk so far so good. Both of them into double figures. Augustus now with 11 points. And we saw Georgia as uh, Ebony Felder comes in. Felder the, uh, on the chronically hurt list. Thomas takes a break. Two, uh, two bad knees, and particularly her left one, so she'll just come in and give Thomas a quick break, and then she'll have to sit down. Pokey Chapman is the interim head coach as Sue Gunner rests at home. We will check in with her when we come back. Nice Harley. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to get one of those myself, but I uh, spent $64.95 on a killer dinette set. It was tough, you know. It was Harley, dinette set, Harley, dinette set. The all-new Sportster is here. Went with a dinette set. The bike you've always wanted starts at $64.95. Baseball is back. It's opening night on ESPN2. After a bitter ending to last year's season, Pedro Martinez has Boston recharged for another pennant run. Opening night presented by the Home Depot, Sunday at 8 on... Weeknights, TV Guide covers primetime in the news magazine, What's On. This is TV Guide Channel's ultimate one-hour guide to What's On TV. Throughout the night, we report what's new, what's best, and what to watch next. What's On, weeknights starting at 7, 6 central, and throughout primetime on TV Guide Channel. Equality Forum, the global gay and lesbian civil rights event in Philadelphia, birthplace of freedom, with Canada as the featured nation. This year, over 55 programs, including panels on gay marriage and the presidential election. Catch Xana Don't before it hits Broadway. 
and don't miss the art exhibit, Canadian cabaret, parties, barbecue, and Sunday out. Join us April 26th through May 2nd. For details, visit equalityforum.com. Is Flonase. LSU leading Georgia by one in the West Regional Final, and yes, a lot of people love Sue Gunner, who joins us now live on the phone from Baton Rouge, who has to, I'm sure it's excruciating, Coach Gunner, to sit and watch this as uh, you recover from bronchitis. The first question, Sue, is how are you feeling? Oh, good. Uh, coming along really good. Feel much better, making progress and so forth, and uh, probably the greatest stress is being here instead of being there in Seattle. Yeah, I would think that that would have to be the most difficult <laughs> thing. And uh, a lot of people are wondering, because Baton Rouge is only an hour away from New Orleans, if you guys win tonight, I know you don't want to think about this if, would you be able to attend the Final Four in, uh, I, in yeah, New Orleans? Yeah, I'll get there. There's, I, I don't know in what capacity, but I'll be there. If we get there, I'll be there. Well, Coach, Simone Augustus has had an incredible tournament thus far. What makes her such a special player to coach? You know, I, I, I think Simone, as, as the maturity that she is gaining, uh, only a sophomore, but she, she she plays the game so smoothly and so solidly. She just uh, she lets the game come to her. She doesn't try to force anything. She, shot, shot selection is excellent. Uh, she's just a multi-dimensional player. She really is, and she's fun to watch. Now we saw Christy Thomas has gotten off to a fast start for Georgia. What are your keys for your post players by committee tonight in defending her? Well, you know, I, I, I think that is a, a problem for us. Uh, uh, you know, we, we can't uh, we can't afford to get in foul trouble. Uh, we also we can't afford to let her just go at, at random. And Chris is an outstanding player. But I think so far we've done a pretty good job if we keep her off the boards as well. Not always concerns us when we play Georgia. Is a very good rebounding team. Pierce is a very good player as well, but you just can't let their inside game be. But their guard play is excellent as, as, as well. And three very young and good guards, as Krista Thomas actually is, is taking a breather right now, so yep. that LSU doesn't have to deal with her now. Coach, how much do you talk to Pokey? I know Pokey's been with you for 17 years as a player <laughs> and now as a coach, and she says her cell phone rings quite a bit. Well, we you know we talk all the time, and we, we we've been talking. And Pokey's. Uh, you know, she's just a very bright young coach, and she's, uh, uh, from the time she was a player, she was outstanding, and uh, uh, th through this whole session that we've been through since January, uh, the staff has just done a great job, but we've managed to communicate and talk and have input from all sides, and they've, they've done a brilliant job of, of uh, carrying things out for us. Yeah, she's getting used to wins because all these wins are, are counting on your tab now well over 700 for your career, and... Uh, you have yet to get to the Final Four. It would be the deepest of ironies, wouldn't it, if LSU would win tonight, get to the Final Four, and you're home watching on TV? Uh, you know, this, this, you know, these kids have done such a great job this year to where they are right now. Uh, we got to this point last year, and we couldn't get it over the top. But I think these kids are very poised. I think they're very focused on what they want to do. And then, of course, there are no surprises. Georgia knows us. We know them. Um, I thought it's, it's going to be a heck of a game. And... Uh, uh, but it sure would be nice to, to, to wind up in New Orleans. How about Simone just hit her 14th point, Coach? And finally, before we let you go, I know you have two years left on your contract. A lot of people are concerned about uh, about your health. No doubt that you'll be back next year? We're doing well. We're doing well, and that's okay. our plan. That's, that's all we need to know, Coach. Thank you so much Th for your time. On the show. Thank you, guys. You're doing a good job. All right. Thanks, Coach. Ebony Felder is doing a good job. She's a block shot and a basket for Georgia. Great to hear from Coach Gunner. It is so weird to see that bench with how Sue Gunner on that sideline. She's been at LSU for 22 years and has been a head coach of college for 40 years. So, you're right. And Corey Chambers hits a big three. How about the freshman for Georgia thus far tonight? But Coach Gunner has really been a fixture on the sidelines for LSU. Uh, one of the Hall of Fame coaches that we have in women's college basketball. And certainly wish her uh, back to health. And it's be good if LSU can win. And, and we might see her in the world. Meanwhile, her team is down by two. As Thomas stays on the bench. Felder getting quite a few minutes. and gets her second block. How about that? Coach Landers talked about when Ebony Felder comes off the bench. She just infuses energy into this Georgia team. She's such a warrior. 
Denise Hardrick fouled as she goes to the basket. And there's that career, the coaching resume, third most wins among women's NCAA coaches behind Pat Summit and Jody Conrad in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. She was supposed to be the 1980 Olympic team coach, but we had the boycott because uh, the Soviets had invaded Afghanistan. She didn't have that opportunity. Uh, Jimmy Dykes with more on Sue. Hey, Pam, talking to uh, Pokey Chapman before the ball game, I said, when's the last time you talked to Sue? She said, about two hours before we came this direction. And she said, you know what, Jimmy, it's like clockwork now. Every time Sue calls, it'll take her about 90 seconds to finally get into talking about basketball. She'll call and act like, where did you go eat? What did you all do today? Did you watch the Tennessee game last night? And she said, clockwork. 90 seconds into every conversation, the basketball questions then start coming. Well, enough of the small talk already. Exactly. <laughs> they get into that. And, uh, and uh, what a terrific partnership that they uh, continue to, to forge as LSU tries to get to the Final Four. We were leaving on Saturday night, and it just started to rain here in Seattle. And Pokey Chapman and her staff were walking to their cars quite a distance away. <laughs> and Pokey looked at this and said, you know what? I bet Sue wouldn't be walking to her car. No. <laughs> Sue would have that car up at the front. Yep. But, uh, we all miss her and, and obviously wish her well. LSU on the break. Hoffman checking in, going in, and it's fouled by Hardrick. Well, that's where LSU can be so explosive. It's in the transition game, and that was one of the keys by the LSU coaching staff is they want to run for the entire game. Austin going to the line, and uh, basketball fans might remember Shalonda Austin as Shalonda Durrell. She sat out of basketball for a year because she had a little baby girl a little over a year ago, got married to Frederick Austin. And, uh, now she's a mom. She had her, her uh, scholarship rescinded for a little while, but did gain it back, got in good academic standing, and uh, now she's doing it all. Student, wife, and mother. Obviously quite an adjustment for her, but she's doing well and is the leading scorer off the bench for LSU. This is that second free throw, but it is put right back in by Crystal White, part of this post player by committee system for the Lady Tigers. Well, I, I really think that aside from Simone Augustus and Tamika Johnson, great play against Texas. This post player by committee really neutralized the scoring punch of Stacey Stevens and Tiffany Jackson from Texas. They, they do a great job beating them 71 to 55 and an impressive play by Hoston. Well, the stars are out tonight in Seattle. You take a look at Christy Thomas here, key for Georgia with the post move. And then Simone Augustus, who's been on all tournaments. The new Colorado Z71 with an available 220 horsepower engine. Durrett. Don't let all that power go to your head. Chevy, an American revolution. Way to go, Dad. You just ordered up some Domino's. And you earned extra points with your kids by throwing in a fun side of new cheesy Domino's dots. Now you're free to spend some quality time with your son. Maybe even teach him how to play baseball. Lots and lots of baseball. Have fun tonight. Get an order of new cheesy Domino's Dots for just 99 cents when you buy a large 1,000 pizza for $9.99. Get the door. It's a cheesy good time from Domino's. If your dinner doesn't arrive in five seconds, it's on us. Too rare? The five-second guarantee. Bad idea for fine dining. Good idea for online trading. At Ameritrade, if your qualified trade takes longer than five seconds, your commission is waived. Sign up now and get 25 commission-free trades. Go to Ameritrade.com slash TV slash or call 888-493-7500. No, no, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, can I get that cap when you're done? No. <laughs> yeah, all right. If you run around the house in your skivvies. No. Yeah. Oh, I got to see this. Yeah, me too. toss and then the, the caps from Spe he and uh, coach Gilbert were very excited about that one Reese Davis no Fortner Stacy Dell Schumann coming up on the singular 
Eunice Bjork, when we went back in 97, he made it to the... Plenty of highlights and reaction coming up, guys. We'll see you in a few minutes. Right, we look forward to that. Reese, Nell, and Stacy. Connecticut with a convincing win over Penn State. White missing that shot. And Hardrick gets the rebound for Georgia. We are knotted up at 26 apiece. A terrific game between these two SEC ball clubs. Georgia got to the SEC tournament final. They blew a big lead to Vanderbilt and ended up losing as Hardrick goes coast to coast. She is into double figures with 11 points. Off the penetration and hitting those two big threes. She's ready to play tonight. She has 11. Thomas for 10. Simone Augustus has 14 to lead everybody for LSU. Jones, good job by Thomas. He came over on the double team and forced the travel. Christy Thomas, the only senior for this Georgia Lady Bulldog team. Tina Taylor was a senior at the beginning of the year, but went out in October with a torn ACL injury, leaving Thomas as the only senior on the squad. Joe Baker working against Augustus. Shot clock at nine. Roger one on one with Johnson. Takes it right to her. And Johnson ties her up. Fusion on that uh, offensive sequence. Now just five seconds left on the shot clock for, for Georgia. Baker, Pierce has to shoot it. She has yet to hit a shot. Coming up on the singular halftime report, we'll go back to Reese, now and Stacy. UConn making history as they go back to the Final Four for the fifth time in a row. We'll hear from them, analysis on that. Also look ahead to two great games tomorrow as Hodges loses it out of bounds. Tennessee and Stanford, of course. Stanford, what, what an exciting game yesterday. Stanford getting that last second shot. Siminski nailing the three as they break, uh, as they beat Vanderbilt. And then there was that Tennessee game that will be talked about for quite a while now against Baylor. And that was a controversial game. You'd like to let the players decide the end of the game. It was an unfortunate end for that game. So Tennessee taking on Stanford. There's Johnson losing it. You don't see her do that often. And White unable to convert. She's missed a couple of shots underneath. Georgia gets it back. We have hit a minute to go in the first half in Seattle. Christy Thomas beats White inside. And she gets the basket. She has a dozen, Jimmy. Well, that's a great pass from the wing area. Again, Carrie, we go back to what we talked about in the opening of this show. LSU said today in their shoot-around, if you take away the baseline drive of Georgia, if you take away 50% of their offense. So far, Pokey Chapman's club has not given up one baseline drive in this game so far. I think that's a real key. Well, that is, that is a big key. Uh, the other 50% of that offense, though, will go with Christy Thomas, and she had 12 points. So they're neutralizing the perimeter of Georgia's drive, but they have to, they have to contain Christy Thomas there in the block. She's really having her way. Tomorrow, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues. Mid-East Regional Top Seed Duke takes on Minnesota. Look out for McCarville and Whalen, 7 Eastern Time, 4 Pacific. And then Tennessee plays Stanford, 9 Eastern Time, 6 Pacific on ESPN. Your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. And Christy Thomas does have a dozen points with that bucket she hit. Her first point in nine and a half minutes. She has gotten her... You know, her fill of shots, 11 shots, but she's gone nine and a half minutes without scoring. Well, I like the fact that Georgia has made a concerted effort early on to get the ball inside. I think that's where this game is going to be won. If Georgia wins it, it's through Christy Thomas. Points in the paint, 12 to 2 in favor of the Lady Bulldogs. A nine second differential between the shot and game clock inside. Hardrick is fouled as she headed to the hoop, and Andy Landers wants a signal for a timeout. Let's see if they give it to him. Yep. Johnson called for her first personal foul. Landers, 17.6 seconds left in this half. Talking it over with his team, and this is something. 
Bernie Landers has been living with. No titles, more wins than anybody who has yet to win a title in the history of women's basketball. 41 wins, also the most final four appearances. He's been there five times previously, has been to the championship game twice, and does not have a title. But this is a guy who at least has been to five Final Fours. A lot of coaches would give at least their, you know, one of their limbs to get to one Final Four. So he's had a very successful career, but it's like, you know, the, the Buffalo Bills and the Minnesota Vikings, you don't win that title, and it's like there's a little asterisk by you there. Well, it's tough, but I think you have to appreciate what uh, the Georgia program has meant to women's basketball. 21 tournament appearances, five Final Fours, 10 regional final appearances. I mean, that's just incredible and coaching since he was 26 years old at the University of Georgia. They won their 25th game of the season the other night against Purdue, his 15th 25-win season at Georgia. Hardrick, what a first half she has had. She has 13 points. Georgia's biggest lead now at six. See if LSU can chip into it. They make the run at Augustus, but she gets by Baker and Hardrick. Simone Augustus is wow. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Andy Landers threw a double team at Simone Augustus. She just evaded that with the behind-the-back dribble and hit the nice drummer. And I think she got poked in the eye, too, because she's holding on to her eye a little bit, at least wincing. But Simone Augustus, you can't, you just can't stop her sometimes. Well, Andy Landers throws two people at her. You see Baker Hardrick, just a quick behind the back and a nice soft touch. So it's a four-point lead for Georgia. Let's go to Jimmy Dykes with Andy Landers. Coach, you talked this morning to your kids, always know where Simone Augustus is, but even when you do, she can still knock down shots. What do you do the second half on her? She, she's a great player, and you know, when she comes over the screen and gets a basketball or height advantage, we're where we want to be. We just can't affect her right now. You know, the person that's hurt us the first half that we didn't want to hurt us is Johnson off of ball screens. We've got to step up and do a better job with her. Are you happy with the pace of the ball game? Yeah, I think, I think the pace is to our advantage. I think LSU would like to be running more. They need transition points and they've only gotten two of those. All right, Coach, good luck the second half. Thank you. Tamika Johnson, six points and three assists at the break. The wonderful Simone Augustus, seven of 11 from the floor with 16 points, but the bottom line, Georgia is up by four. Let's go to Reese Davis for the singular halftime report. Pam, thank you very much. Nell Fortner, Stacey Dell, Schumann joining me. Good entertaining first half between Georgia and LSU. One of the themes of this tournament, the great senior class that we will be losing by the end of this run, Diana Taurasi's got her team into the Final Four. You're looking for the next wave of stars. Simone Augusta's team is behind right now, but is she the new face of women's college basketball? Well, Reese, in the eighth grade, she was on the cover of Women's Sports Illustrated. I think she's starting to fulfill her destiny at LSU. She has 16 points this half. I think she is the future of this game. She can score from anywhere on the floor. She is a phenomenal basketball player. She is indeed, but I love the way George is playing right now. I love the way they're going into Christy Thomas. Really, LSU has no answer defensively for Thomas. They have a different game stance defensively than they did versus Texas. They're not entirely smothering the paint. They're allowing her to catch down low, and that's a problem for LSU. Got a little piece of the future for you for the Lady Dogs, too. Janice Hardrick, full oh, of energy, that. making yeah. some big-time plays. And she just pulled her hair back, so she's... I think she's raring to go. Well, that's always important. I know that when I get ready for a big show, I try to pull, my, I try to gel mine back just a little bit. Speaking of hair pulled back tightly in a bun, not mine, Diana Tarazzi. She's got her team back into the Final Four for a record fifth straight time. We'll show you how she did it and how she and a teammate annihilated Penn State. But you play with dolls. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. An available CD MP3 player in a car you can actually afford. Now we can roll all day. If I can buy Sounds all good, day. huh? Meet the surprisingly big Chevy Aveo. With the surprisingly big five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain promise. The new Chevrolet. An American revolution. Now, uh, Come back soon? As soon as I can. I'll use my Miles card. I'll use my Miles card. I'm back. With most Miles programs, it takes a long time to earn a free flight. All these years. Oh, you never got a Capital One card? 
Introducing No Hassle Rewards from Capital One. Free flights start at 9,000 miles with no blackout dates. Check your mailbox for details. What's in your wallet? Don't ask. Quick, in the top five water polo players in the world. Okay, how about one? Yeah. I didn't start playing water polo to get famous. And the same goes for being a biology major. I like working in protein chemistry. Quick, they're the top five protein chemists in the world. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something. Even as a kid, I believed in giving people more for their money. I'm Roger Reiney. I started Scottrade to take care of online investors like nobody else. With $7 trades, no transaction fees on thousands of mutual funds and offices nationwide. Click, call, or stop by Scottrade today. Just got to try McDonald's premium salad. A warm breast of grilled or crispy chicken over mixed greens and Newman's own all-natural dressings. Come on in and taste why it just doesn't get much better. This halftime report is presented by Singular, the wireless company that fits you best. West Regional Final, a spot in the Final Four in New Orleans on the line. LSU trying to get back to its home state, but they trailed Georgia 32-28 at the break. Glad to have you with us on the singular halftime report. You know, maybe it's about time to change the name of the Final Four to the Final Three, because one of the spots in the Final Four has been reserved parking. UConn had won it four straight years, advancing to the Final Four. No program, not the great Louisiana Tech teams, not the great Tennessee teams had ever made it five years in a row. The Huskies had that opportunity, East Regional Final against Penn State. That would be top-seeded Penn State. But in the early going, Diana Tarazi served notice that she was going to control and dictate this game with a big-time assistance from Barbara Turner. Oh, friendly nighttime banking hours in Hartford for Barb Turner. And Turner again. 4-3. 21 to 11, UConn second half. Huskies up by 12. Tarazi, see the three, be the three. Reese, I want to know where the defense was on the screen. Tarazi came off screens all night. How about that pass right there? Got you know it's a great layup. pass. When well, they miss the layup and you show the pass anyway. Well, I can't even believe she caught the ball. Who would have thought that pass was coming? Well, unless you played with Magic Johnson, who Diana idolizes, not many people would have. Kelly Mazanti got it going for a while, but there's Turner answering again with another three. And Tarazi and Gino going back to the final four five straight times. No one has ever done that. 66 to 49, the final. Tarazi with 27 points to lead the way. And not to mention the fact that Connecticut held Penn State to 28% from the field, Reed. Not only that, Tarazi and Turner combined to make as many field goals by themselves as the entire Lady Lion team. Tarazi glad to be headed back to the final four. Can you describe your emotions for us on this, your final home game at UConn? You really can't. Uh, if I would put it into words, I think it would take away from the feeling. And there's no better feeling than coming out to the sideline of coach. Um, he's been great to me and, and us. And, you know, this was more than getting to the final four. It was more of our character and our pride today. And uh, I think we did a pretty good damn job. I just think there's a, there's a special quality about some of our guys. Uh, and I think it comes from the leadership that Diana gives them, and she kind of sets the tone for them. And, uh, you know, Barbara Turner is just a unique matchup for people. And uh, tonight, the two of them just, they made every big play that needed to be made. And, and I can't say enough about our defense and how well we played defensively. They did play brilliantly defensively, and Turner and Tarazi took care of all of the offense. They outscored Penn State by themselves. Combined, they shot 62% from the floor and equaled the Lady Lions in number of assists. It was total domination by the second team. Barb Turner was terrific. She sure is. She's shooting over 50% for the tournament, Reese. And right now, she's coming at them from all places on the floor. 
I mean, nobody on Penn State could guard her off the dribble tonight, but she's really improved her three-point shooting, and that's what's very impressive. But how about the spin move, you know, the spin move? How about Diana Taurasi now? Look at her come off this screen right here. There's no bump help from the Penn State defenders, and if you're going to chase me over, I'm just going to stop and hit it anyway. Diana Taurasi had 27 points. She hit the first three field goals for her team, and she really set the tempo. And that was a great pass, and you said it, Reese. It's a good enough pass, even though the layup didn't go in. You know it's a good pass if they show it on TV. And Tarazi also had to deal with the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, the two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Tanisha Wright. Still, she was able to keep the Husky offense in sync and put up 27 points. Well, I was surprised that anybody would go behind a screen on Diana Tarazi or really chasing around a screen and not having anybody step up to bump her when she does that. Too many wide-open looks for Diana Tarazi. It really proves you have to do it by committee, and Penn State just didn't do it by committee. Tanisha Wright nice try but not enough and Barb Turner after that performance the big fan of Spongebob Squarepants Krabby Patties for everybody after that brilliant performance UConn on its way back to the final four Christy Thomas hopes that George will be joining them though Simone Augustus has a notable first half 16 points of her team 28 and Christy Thomas was a big key for Georgia in the paint LSU is going to have to do something to, to counter her all right well Pokey Chapman do she's standing by with Jimmy Dykes Coach, this morning you talked to your kids a lot about taking away the drive ability of Georgia. You've backed off, you've taken away the drive, but it's opened up the interior passing now for Christy Thomas. Do you adjust that now in the second half at all? You know, that adjustment is okay. I'm worried about what we're doing on the offensive end of the floor. We have to make them guard. We're not reversing the basketball. We're not getting paint touches. We're not getting in transition. I think if you hold Georgia 32 points, you should be able to beat them. Okay, good luck to you the second half, Coach. But they are down 32 to 28. And Ebony Felder is starting the second half instead of Rebecca Rousey. The one change for Georgia. We also need to tell you that Janice Hardrick is out there. Got that left elbow wrap. Got her hurt against Purdue the other day. She did not warm up before the second half and had ice on the elbow. Inside, Jones misses. Follow, foul. You want to keep your eye on Hardrick. Well, here we're going to take a look at what g and I talked about before the game, and that's cutting off the baseline. You take a look at Terrell Baker here. Simone Augustus is guarding her. She's going to look to drive baseline. Hardrick passes her ball. Simone Augustus does a nice job of taking away that baseline, forcing Baker to reverse it to Hardrick. Christy Thomas called for her first personal foul, sends Wendland Jones to the free throw line. Now we're going to take a look at the end of the play. You've got Tamika Johnson right here. Hardrick is going to look to go baseline with the shot clock going down. Johnson forces her to the middle where the help is getting the jump ball, the alternate possession. Jones hitting both of her free throws to cut the lead to two points. Georgia got shot, shot just 34% in the first half. It was out rebounded 2019, but has the lead as Baker draws the foul. Jones hacked her as she went by. That's two on one one. That's something I think Sherelle Baker needs to go toward here in the second half. She took a lot of early jump shots in that first half. That record has seen better days. Six from the field. The season. She only shot three of ten against Purdue on Saturday night, so she's in a bit of a shooting slump from the floor, but gets her first two points. Right. And maybe he succeeded. Our task of guarding Sharika Wright and now Simone Augustus. For anyone to do, much less back-to-back. -back. And speaking of double, Simone Augustus hits her first shot of the second half, give her 18. Augustus continues to be red hot, hits 7 of 11 shots in the first half, keeping pace with that 67% field goal percentage of the tournament. Felder blocked by Willis. Let's take a look now at some of the numbers from the first half. Georgia not shooting well, but they're, they're just going after him in the paint. LSU not one long-range shot. <laughs> Simone Augustus and Tamika Johnson are not known for hitting that three-point shot. Their really big three-point threat is Danica Hodges, and Georgia made it a point in their shoot-around to know where she is at all times, not to give her any open three. She was one of five in the first half, and no three. Only three assists in the first half for Tamika Johnson, who has 12, 12, and 13 in her first three NCAA tournament games. Well, you know you're talking about a good point guard when we say only three assists in the, in the first half. Most of you guys would take that, right? <laughs> Let's take a look now. Uh, 
at the defense on the other end of the floor. Well, here you've got Ebony Felder, ISO one-on-one -on, -one on the post. Great timing there by Tilly Willis to get her hand on the ball. Felder just going out of the game. Pierce in. Hodges just dribbles it off. They only had a second to get it off. So Pierce comes in. She was 0-4 from the floor in the first half. The Georgia, she was number 13. She likes to shoot that mid-range jumper. Margaret with a sore left elbow. Kendrick gets underneath the Willis. A little bit of contact, but no foul. And here comes LSU on the break. Johnson as Hodges finds her. And Hodges charges. A terrific defensive position as Hardrick continues to give up her body. Here, let's take a look at this replay. Was she there in time? Uh, it's kind of, I'm not too sure what they call it a charge, but a gutsy play there by the freshman to stick her nose under there and, and, and take a charge for the team. And regardless of whether she was there in time, she got pummeled and she's holding on to her rib cage just below the number four in her 14, limping a little bit. And again, she did not warm up at all in the second half because of her hurt left elbow. Baker takes the star and holds another example of her being more aggressive offensively. And she is lightning quick when she gets that ball and just takes Augustus off the dribble there. And she's so quick getting off the floor. Her elevation, she's so tough to guard. Augustus picks up her first personal foul. And Baker goes back to the line for the second time this week. Baker just a sophomore. She broke Teresa Edwards' Georgia so sophomore steals record, which tells you how quick and good she must be because Edwards is one of the all-time greats, not only in Georgia history, but women's basketball history. Five-time Olympian for Teresa. As Baker misses, here's Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Karen, talking to Simone Augustus before the ball game, she made a great point to me when I was talking to her about moving without the basketball. She said, I've learned to play without the ball in different speeds. I pick and choose when I blast past someone. How tough is that defensively to cover someone that understands that? Well, it's very tough because it's easy, Jimmy, to guard a player that goes one speed, whether they go slow all the time or fast all the time. You can be the quickest player offensively, but if you do not change your speed, you will not be effective and not get open. You know, I am so impressed with uh, her knocking down about 70% of her shots. And like you said earlier, we're talking about a kid that takes a ton of shots. She has a terrific feel for the game. Well, she takes a ton of shots as we see another incredible display of athleticism by Sherelle Baker. She takes a ton of shots, but what I love about Simone Augustus is she takes good shots. Very rarely will you see her force a shot or take a shot, not in the context of their offense. Corey Chambers in, missing that shot for Georgia. And Augustus, she has deceptive speed. Because you look at her, it almost looks like she's just kind of loping down the court. And then all of a sudden, she's a blur. There's a purple blur, and she finishes by and just for another basket. Well, I think sometimes she kind of lulls you to sleep as a defender and just kind of just goes along, and then she'll make a quick uh, burst, have a quick burst of speed, and, and uh, kind of get open and get the ball. This is ridiculous how easy she makes everything look effortless. Chambers over Hodges. She continues to shoot and miss Baker. Not only can steal the ball, but rebounds the ball well. For somebody who's 5'8", she's got an incredible vertical leap. That's Eric pass taken by Willis. Georgia up by two in the West Regional Final. Georgia had a four-point lead at halftime. The winner plays the winner of tomorrow's Stanford-Tennessee game in New Orleans. LSU trying to get to the Final Four for the first time ever, which is remarkable considering it's been such a solid program for so many years. Tamika Johnson, a solid point guard. Her first basket of the second half, she's got eight, and we're tied up. Chambers again, and her shot has deserted her. Had a terrific first round game against Liberty and has struggled ever since. Johnson regains control. With a bang and underneath. Great job by Thomas to close off the lane. Simone Augustus. Unbelievable. It has been an absolute pleasure to watch such an incredible player play in this West Regional. Simone Augustus, I don't know how you guard her, Pam. I, I really don't. They put quickness on her. You put size on her. She just has an answer for everything defensively out here. That was her mother, Kim. We got a quick shot of his Pierce. Gets her first field goal, and her mom, Kim, had two Simone Augustus buttons on, two different poses of Simone. 
got her to stand still long enough to take those shots. And boy, does she have something to be proud of. She's coming off a career high 29 points against Texas the other night. And she's got 21 today. LSU with the lead at 37 to 36. The SEC is short again of getting a team into the Final Four. Baker right down the teeth of the lane. Thomas battles, but LSU comes away with it. Johnson with her head up, shooting over Hardwick, misses. And a rejection by Thomas. Coast to coast action, and Hardwick, bad left elbow and all, goes in lefty. Well, that's a nice play there by the freshman, but how about the pace? It has picked up here. The intensity has picked up. These two teams are fighting very hard for that final four bird. And this time, Hardwick is not going to get the call. She is called for the block. Two personal fouls on Janice. Simone Augustus has had an incredible tournament thus far, taking the three-point shot. And she's not even really known for a three-point shot, but she's doing it in all areas. ESPN The Magazine, on newsstand now. Nice Harley. Thanks. Yeah, I was going to get one of those myself, but I uh, spent $64.95 on a killer dinette set. It was tough, you know. It was Harley, dinette set, Harley, dinette set. The all-new Sportster is here. Went with a dinette set. The bike you've always wanted starts at $64.95. Hey, yo, Thirst, let me get a Sprite. No doubt. What's better than Sprite when it's hotter than a devil? Georgia does not have an answer for her. When her outside shot is on target, you see the nice crossover. She'll take you off the bounce. Here in transition, defensive miscue by Georgia. She's knocking it down. Simone Augustus is hitting on all cylinders tonight offensively. And you see that uh, she is outscoring her team. 9 of 13 from the floor. She continues to hit 67%, 67% of her shots in this NCAA tournament. And that three that she made, by the way, only 23 she's taken all year. She's hit eight of them. Tamika Johnson leaves it short, but hustles. Boy, almost a face plant. The officials discuss who gets the ball, and they say Lady Tigers. We love the hustle there by both players. And for those of you that haven't watched that much SEC basketball, I was fortunate enough to play in the SEC. It is a dogfight. And when that loose ball is going, you see the desire there by Johnson, by Chambers. They want to get that ball. This is bigger to these players. It is big going to the Final Four, but you're talking about Georgia LSU. They're used to playing down in Athens or down in Baton Rouge. It's a dogfight. They only played each other once during the regular season this year. Georgia won in Athens. And I remember when, when we knew these two teams were going to get there when uh, Georgia beat Purdue the other night. First thing we said was, it is going to be a dogfight. <laughs> it is going to be a war, and that exactly is what it is. Very physical, and obviously these two these players know each other well. Four seconds left on the shot clock for Tamika Johnson. Keep the double figures with 10 points. Georgia trailing LSU by one. Tamika Johnson with those 10 points and four assists. Hardrick, long range three, and she right back in front. Like that Kendrick. Kendrick, in fact, hitting her first shot. That's her first points of the day for Alexis Kendrick. It doesn't matter if Alexis Kendrick has zero points or 20 points going near the end of the game. 
as you see that nice pass by Simone Augusta showing off that she can do more than just score. You know, Alexis Kendrick hit the game winner for Georgia against Purdue, so she has a knack for making big plays at the end of all game. There's more from Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Pam, during that last time out, LSU's Bokey Chapman talked about them going to a point zone. Concerned about the ball continuing to go to the high post, and she also feels like Georgia now starting to drive the ball a little bit down the teeth of the defense. Look for that point zone out of LSU soon. Well, let's turn around. No good. Baker controls the rebound. We'll touch on what Jimmy just talked about. We anticipate after seeing shoot around this morning that both teams, we would see a little bit of zone from both of them. This is the first uh, point zone that we've seen from LSU. I would, I would anticipate we're going to see a 2-3 zone from Georgia here in the second half. Just the coach is changing up a little bit. All right, Felder continues to battle. Ebony's fourth point playing on that horrible left knee of hers that will need surgery in the offseason. Georgia is up by two over LSU. Tamika Johnson has three double-doubles in as many NCAA games. She's already up to double figures in points for the Tigers. like to have the hot hand in the hottest selling car in its class. Pontiac Vibe. Official performance machine of the NCAA Women's Final Four. The new dual action infusion from Spalding. Air when you need it, less when you don't. What? Oh, come on, come on. Struggling to keep your grass green? Maybe it's time for a better way. That's why there's Bayer Advanced Triple Action Fertilizers. They work at every level, feeding the grass, the roots, plus fortifying the soil for a thicker, deep-down green that lasts longer. From Bayer Advanced, better thinking, better results. Available at Lowe's and other garden retailers. And now kill more weeds while you feed with Triple Action Fertilizer plus Weed Control. Meet Annie. She worked to stay physically fit. Turned out that was only a piece of it. There's Steve. He said, I can take it from here. Why it didn't work out, he was not quite clear. These are some of the many who finally found out when they asked their doctor what Crestor's about. So log on to Crestor.com. You'll see why. You might want to visit your doctor. Bye-bye. We have a terrific West Regional Final going on. Already six ties and 12 lead changes. Georgia leading LSU 43-41. Christy Thomas, we talked about this at the beginning of the game. you got to get her touches. She has not taken a shot in eight minutes of this uh, second half. Well, that's one of the things that we did touch on, and I think that's a disturbing trend for Georgia. It happened in their game against Purdue. Although they were fortunate enough to come out with the win, they go through key stretches of the ball game where their big post stud does not touch the ball. I don't think they can afford to do that tonight and win the game. They had a, she had a nine-and-a-half-minute drought in the first half without scoring. And she's not even taking a shot in the second half. Terrific guards on this team. Sometimes they lose, they lose sight of pick number four in the paint. Augustus is human. She misses a shot. But Tilly Willis gets the rebound. So Augustus, if you're just joining us, 21 points. She's coming off a career-high 29 against Texas in the upset win Saturday. What a cut to the basket, but she misses again, but gets her own rebound. So three chances for LSU in this possession. That's really deflating for a defense. You force LSU into two tough shots, and now all of a sudden you're playing almost 90 seconds of defense. Oh, Sherelle Baker so disruptive on defense. But Tamika Johnson gathers it. Shot clock at 10. Austin back into the game. Thomas rebounds it to the Bulldogs. So LSU, with three shots on that possession, got nothing. Well, Baker.
Baker, 0 for 7 from the floor. One of those good guards. A terrific entry pass, and Pierce converts. I love it when we get that little high-low, post-to-post. Nice look inside there by Thomas. Christie doesn't have a shot, but she's got herself a nifty assist in the second half. Georgia takes the four-point lead. A rainbow shot over Pierce. And Thomas gets the rebound. Inside, Pierce can't get it. Good post defense by Willis to knock it away. I think this pace at this point certainly favors Georgia. LSU thrives off getting points in transition. Georgia only nine players. It only takes eight tonight. And after two straight misses, Simone Augustus gets point number 23. And there's a player who you think would have to at least touch the ball every time down the floor for LSU. And all these great seniors graduating this year, I go out on a limb and say she's my favorite player of the year next year. And a national player of the year. She's a special player. She would have to be my pick as well coming in just because of what she has the ability to take over a game. She will just be a junior next year. Diana Trossi and the rest of the Connecticut Huskies a convincing win over Penn State. They'll play the winner of Duke, Minnesota. Our winner plays the winner of Tennessee Stanford. They play tomorrow night. Both of those games tomorrow night on ESPN. And the winners head on to New Orleans for the final four. Thomas had a shot opportunity, but didn't take it, probably should have. But a foul is called against LSU. We got Tilly Willis, I believe, and if so, that's her third. Yes, it is. So maybe that time, Christy should have shot the ball. A little bit more aggressive than that. So unselfish sometimes, these post players. Well, Baker's still looking for her first field goal. There's two free throws. Georgia loves this play off the out-of-bounds. Screening for the live play for Christy Thomas. I think it was an all right look for Sherelle Baker. All right, all right. She has five second-half touches, by the way, does Christy. Just a wonderful kid. Senior from Buford, Georgia. Proud big sister of Corey, who was born last May. Only child for 20 years, and along comes Corey, and she couldn't be happier. Baker, all the points from the free throw line. All four of them. And that is Georgia's lead up by four. The winner going to New Orleans. Inspired, but is it more than a car? Yes. Does it have the government's highest crash test rating? Yes. Does all-wheel drive make it more than a minivan? Yes. Does a lower stance make it well beyond the SUV? Yes. The Chrysler Pacifica. That's a lot of yeses for something starting at 29,525. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. What am I? Am I a basketball player who's a psychology major? Or am I a psychology major who's a basketball player? You know, that's the thing about psychology. You tend to overanalyze everything. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. To achieve superior results in business, you need to build on a solid foundation. Integrity, accountability, and passion are the building blocks of success. At HRH, we offer corporate risk management, personal risk management, employee benefits, and surety programs that outthink our competition, so we can help you outthink yours. HRH. Problem solved. Powered by motivated professionals and transfer students. Energized by the vitality of our urban setting. At the University of Baltimore, the numbers are on your side. We're Maryland's only upper division and graduate university with a law school. Located in the heart and minds of the Mount Vernon Cultural District. So call or visit our website. The University of Baltimore. The career-minded university. Georgia Bulldogs 
have the four point advantage over LSU. Winner going on to New Orleans. LSU has never been to the final four. Their big two, Simone Augustus and Tamika Johnson, combining for 33 points. And Georgia is winning, even though they have Thomas and Hardrick playing well, but some of their other guards are struggling. Joel Baker, Corey Chambers, and Alexis Kendrick can combine three of 16 from the floor. But Hardrick, five of six from the floor for Georgia. Hunter Hodges really has not gotten going either. She's one of six from the floor for LSU, one of their big three. Johnson lobs it into Willis. Thomas scooches it away. White, boy, she has missed, by my count, three or four of those relatively easy shots right under the basket. Yeah, those are point-blank layups. you got to hit those. At uh, this juncture in the game, your team needs buckets. You've got to make those easy shots. She's missed three of them, just one of four from the floor. And the three she's missed literally have been from around that same spot. Inside, Pierce, oh, what a pass to Thomas, who finally scores in the second half. Now, Jessica Pierce and Christy Thomas have really worked the post-to-post. -post. When you have a double team, a post-to-post -post double team by LSU, if you're aware enough, when you catch the ball and you have your head up, as Jessica Pierce does, you find your open post, buddy. Christy Thomas with the wide open layup. There you've got Kendrick catching the ball. You see White comes over to double. The nice pass there by Pierce. Christy Thomas lays it in with the left hand. We'll take a look at it from this angle. The help defense comes, and Christy Thomas slides down the lane, giving herself the opportunity to hit the layup. Just great awareness there by Jessica Pierce, fam. Hey, Kara, as a former perimeter player, I'm awfully impressed uh, with Baker, Kendrick, and Hardrick for Georgia. All three of those kids have over 100 assists on the year. So they have more than just one kid that can feed the post, and that's a real luxury right now for Andy Landers. Well, it is, and the thing that impresses me the most about the Georgia backcourt is that they all have the ability to play point. They all have the ability to play wing, to score, to pass, to defend, and that's such a commodity in today's college game. Almost like interchangeable parts. And Pokey Chapman was a terrific guard herself at LSU, but finds her team down by six. Sam Ward, Carol Lawson, and Jimmy Dykes joining you from the Bank of America Arena on the campus of the University of Washington. And this is the old Heck Edmondson Pavilion. They just have renamed it as Danica Hodges heads to the line for LSU. She averages 14 and a half points a game. That's only her third point. And there's a good look. This is a good old fashioned gym. As you take a look up, on the other side, there are windows, and really cool windows. Just, it's just a little neat old gym with lots of purple in it. There's the window. That's a great look. This is, a, this is an old gym. This isn't like that Thompson Bowling or anything. <laughs> this is a gym. Hey, watch it now. Watch it. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. This is, this is just a nice old feel to it. Thomas misses her second shot of this half. And one of those guards, another thing about these guards that we really like is they all can rebound. Yeah, they, they, they can do it all. Every aspect of the game is covered here with this Georgia guard. Kendrick to Pierce. We see Pierce a lot more on the low block in this game. Thomas gets fouled on the cleanup. Well, LSU is really going to have to do something to counter the offensive play of Jessica Pierce and Christy Thomas all over the boards. You cannot allow a good team like Georgia to get second shot. These two posts are really crashing the old boards. Willis now has as Christy hits that. There's Maurice Thomas. That's, that's Christy and Corey's dad. Her mom could not make the trip because it's a long way, obviously, from Athens. And she is staying home with, uh, with little Corey. Christy, hitting both of them. So Maurice Thomas, look, look, I think he's, I think he's barking. He's howling. The dogs are up. How inspiring can a minivan be? Can it give you seats when you need them? And space when you don't? Yes. Can it take a mountain of stuff and make it disappear? With exclusive stow-and-go seating and storage, absolutely. Introducing the all-new Chrysler Town & Country, starting at $20,995. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. If you want to get a jump on spring, you can. And if you want to do it now and pay for it later, you can. 
Right now at the Home Depot and Expo Design Center, you'll get no payments and no interest for 12 months on everything in the store. Just use your consumer credit card. Or if you don't have one, open a new credit card account and you'll get 10% off your first purchase store-wide. You can save up to $200. The Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Honey, come quick. There's French toast on the TV. Well, get a sponge and clean it off. No, it's an ad on TV for Denny's French Toast Slam. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, and just $4.99. Let's go. I don't feel like cooking. Ah, you never feel like cooking. Tonight on Sports Center, LeBron heads down to Duncanville. KG crashes in Houston and how Duke's senior leader got defensive. Plus, the other side of a chilling story. Sports Center, after game, ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Georgia with a six-point lead here on a clear Seattle night. Christy Thomas has the last four points for Georgia. Jimmy Dyke standing by with the proud papa. <laughs> I am with a proud papa. Maurice, your daughter right now looking pretty good, but just over seven minutes ago. Do you ever get frustrated sometimes that maybe she doesn't touch the ball enough? Well, yeah, but, you know, it, Christy plays within the team concept, and it's a little bit frustrating, but we just go with whatever works for the team, that's what we go with. I got to ask you, before winning that last timeout, it looked to me like you were giving out a big old Georgia Bulldog howl. Can you give me one right now? Woo! <laughs> woo, <laughs> Big dog barking over here, Pam. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Good to visit with you. Uh, thank you very much. All right, Maurice, way to go. He's got the, the little one at home and his big one here. It's six, five, six, five. I think a lot of dads think their kids don't get enough touches. Huh? <laughs> Give my kid the ball. Hey, well, she's working on a double-double right now with 16 and 9. I think I'd say get Chrissy the ball more as well. Oh, what a nice piece off the glass for Tamika Johnson. She's got 12 now. 12 points to go along with her five assists. Only a four-point lead now for Georgia. Johnson just dogging up a little bit of daylight for Hardrick. And they don't take advantage of the uh, five-on-four situation. Kendrick to Baker. She's been struggling all night with her shot, but struggled no more. That's a huge three there by Sherelle Baker. All set up by Alexis Kendrick with the look away to Christy Thomas and hits her fellow perimeter player for the three. The biggest lead of the night now for Georgia. Thomas, a big presence in the paint defensively. <laughs> she sets the screen to try to get Johnson away. And I tell you what, Janice Hardrick is going to have some bruises and welts on her body after this game. Bounced around. As we get close to six minutes left in the game. Shot by Baker, by the way. Now one of eight from the four as Hodges blocks Kendrick cleanly. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Here you have Alexis Kendrick with a nice drive. The penetration we talked about to the baseline. Danica Hodges hits it out of bounds. Danica Johnson now hits the bench for a breather as Pierce misses on the inbound play. So Hoston checks in for Johnson, who certainly will not be out of the game long. And a chance for LSU. The offensive rebound by Clavel. Christy Thomas reaching in, but before the held ball, LSU calls a timeout. Coming up tomorrow, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship continues. Mid-East Regional top seed Duke takes on upstart Minnesota at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And then in the Midwest Regional, Tennessee and Stanford follows both on ESPN. Your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. And before the fourth tournament, Stanford was ticked off at being a sixth seed, and they've, they've just been playing great. Well, they have. And when you have a player like Nicole Powell, who almost has a triple-double, not a double, already had a double-double in the first half of, of last night's game, but uh, just a tremendous player, and as a senior, really taking that Stanford team on her back and, and showing that, um, 
you know, she's more than just scoring and uh, making that pass. She was the key player in that uh, Kelly Siminski three-point shot. She drew the defense and kicked it out. Right. Double team, kicked it out. Siminski knocked down the three, and that's going to be a terrific game. Augustus, her second three of the game. She's got 26 points. Again, only her 21st three all season. And unlike Mr. Thomas, Simone's mom, Kim, is she's in 10th. You see the two for two threes. That's two for two. Augustus Thomas turned and blocked by Cobell, who has given them some crucial minutes off the bench the last couple of games in the NCAA tournament. She did not play at all in the first two rounds against Austin P and Maryland, but had 11 points against Texas. Oh, what a pass! Shot to Cobell. Well, there we see post to post from LSU. The nice baseline drive there by Jones and kicks it to Cobell for the open layup. Cornell's first basket today, and we are only separated by two points in the final five minutes. Thomas working against Cobell, takes it and gets the foul. Christy Thomas, the senior, stepping it up big tonight. There's not an LSU post player that can guard her one-on-one. -on -one. Just takes Cobell off the dribble, gets underneath her, and scores the bucket. You have Jones beating her baseline, draws the help, and this is to Clavel for the open layup. But on the other end, uh, Thomas at 6'5", Mary Willowy, and when she has Clavel on her, she's got a real, you know, she is quicker than Clavel, took it right to the hoop, but missed on the opportunity for the three-point play. Thomas with 18 points and nine rebounds. The lead is four. Augustus, little crossover, and swish! Simone Augustus is just unbelievable. I don't really have any words to describe her performance thus far. Big players make big plays in crucial situations. Just give Simone Augustus the ball on the offensive end, she'll deliver. 12 of 18 from the floor, 28 points, one off the career high. She set against Texas on Saturday. Thomas again working against Clavel. Situation. She's not afraid of anything. Simone tries to answer, no go. And the little player, Johnson, ties up Thomas. That's a hell of a ball. Short go will hit Clown on the alternative presenting board. We have a timeout on the floor, 348. So Simone Augustus taking this team on her back and perhaps carrying them to the final four. And then there's the freshman, Hardrick. Two fearless players, both trying to get to New Orleans. can you fit in a small car? Can you make it fun for two? Or four? Yes. Will 220 horses inspire it to gallop? Absolutely. But can it have more than enough room for her? Him? Them? Yes. Chrysler PT Cruiser, starting at $19,995. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard.
Tamika Johnson. On Saturday, they were both wonderful. A career high for Simone. Another double-double. Third straight double-double for Tamika Johnson. The point guard, and that was against Texas. They beat them rather easily, 71-55. to And tonight, Augustus close to another career high. Johnson's assists are down, but she's scoring the points. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a wager here. And it's, I, I would guess that Simone Augustus is going to have a new career high after tonight. She's got 28 points. There's 345 left. She's going to add on, I'd say to that, a little bit. <laughs> right, maybe a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that's a pretty safe bet. Jimmy? Pam, listen to uh, George's timeout. Andy Landers looked all five kids in the eye, and he said, look at me. The most aggressive team will win this ball game over the next three and a half minutes. He talked about staying aggressive, and he talked about cleaning up misses at both ends. But I thought he was very direct and very quick to the point when he said, look at my eyes. The most aggressive team will win. And he looked at me like they bought into it when he said it. Uh, he, he is a very intense coach, and the, he certainly gets the players' attention as we're down to five seconds. And now on the shot clock, fall away jumper, no good. Desperation by Hardrick, and here come the Tigers, but it's taken away by Kendrick. Those quick guards everywhere for Georgia. And now they're going to slow it down a spell. Andrew's moving in now with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Hardrick, the fearless one, working against Johnson. And she's not going to get her shot off. Great play by Tamika, who reached in and grabbed it. Up to Hodges, misses the layup, but she gets her follow and the foul. Well, it looks like right there, when the shot clock went off, some of the Georgia defensive players fell asleep a little bit, did not get back in transition, and as a result, Danica Hodges is going to the line for a three-point play. Thomas called for her second foul. That's four team fouls against Georgia, six against LSU. She just slipped behind the defense there. Stays with it, gets the offensive putback. And Hodges completes the three-point play. Hodges, the senior from New Orleans, only seven points tonight on two of nine shooting, three of three from the line, but that was a huge three-point play to put him to within a bucket. Oh, boy, cross-court pass to Thomas, who gets fouled. That was, ooh, that looked like a risky pass from here from Baker. Well, that was a great look. You would have made that pass? I Woo, that was all the way across the lane. <laughs> Connecticut has beaten Penn State. They play the winner of Duke, Minnesota in New Orleans. And our winner tonight plays the winner of Tennessee, Stanford. They play tomorrow in Norman, Oklahoma. Christy Thomas trying to get her team closer. But she misses the three free throw. Christy down just four of six on the line. Dad Maurice looking on. going down to Christy Thomas. We talked about that. They need to keep going with her. Not able to put it down. These free throws are big. And Tilly Willis has just fouled out of the game. She's got six rebounds and two points, but leaves with five personal fouls. A minute 32 left to go, and Trainel Clavel will come in to replace her at the post position. Willis is a junior. She will obviously be back next year. Boy, she's had a great tournament. 
He had 11 points against Austin P in the first round. A double double against Maryland in the second. Played well against Texas and uh, had six boards today and a lot of physical play against Thomas who hits the free throw. She's missed three of her last four free throws and it's only a one point lead. with 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Pokey Chapman trying to get LSU to its first ever Final Four. Inside, crazy shot off the mark for Tamika Johnson. The smallest player on the floor gets the rebound. About a six second differential between the game and shot clock. Can you imagine what it must be like to be watching this game in Sue Gunner's living room right now? Johnson swats it away, but Clavel gets it back. Shot clock at eight. And a foul on Georgia. However, that is only their fifth team foul. But they only had eight seconds left on the shot clock, 14.3 seconds left on the game clock, and they get... A fresh 30, so the shot clock gone, not a factor. No, I, I don't think that's a smart play at all, and I don't know if that was an inadvertent play by Hardrick, but you've got eight seconds left on the shot clock. You, have, you can force them to, to take a shot and hopefully get the rebound. Now what they have to do is foul twice, and time's going to go off before they can even get the ball back. When we are finished here, coming up on Sports Center, Mike Hall, the Dream Job winner, will be on. Steve Moore, uh, part of that uh, horrific hit in Hockey Speaks, and an update on Emeka o Okafor, who had an MRI, as he hopes to play for UConn against Duke in the men's Final Four. Boy, this has been a pretty good game. Uh, it's been an incredible <laughs> game. It's lived up to its billing. Two SEC teams, Georgia versus LSU. The stars have come to play in Simone Augustus and Christy Thomas, but Tamika Johnson has been huge. Just a one-point lead for LSU. 14.3 seconds left, Jimmy. Guys, you talked about how big Tamika Johnson's been in this ball game. When they lost to Vanderbilt in the SEC Tournament Finals, she called a players-only meeting the next day before practice. And she told me, she said, Jimmy, I put myself out on the limb with all my teammates. She said, because I really challenged everybody. And I didn't know if it sunk in or not. So we went to the practice floor about 30 minutes later, and our whole level of intensity stepped up another notch. She said, we cannot win this thing unless everyone's rowing the boat in the same direction. She says, the first time I've done it as a vocal leader, I didn't know if it sunk in until practice started, but it sunk in. What a terrific little leader. I think the boat is going quite straight and quite strong right now because of Tamika Johnson with those huge jump shots here late in the second half. Another timeout has been called by Georgia. They still have two left. LSU has one remaining. So right now, you go for the steal. If not, you have to foul. Well, you've got the foul, and the reason I don't like that, that foul clearing the, the shot clock is because now if you foul, Sam, they're still not in the bonus, so they have to foul twice just to get to the one-and-one, one, which is going to take precious time off the clock. And then, of course, you have to hope that they miss one. If they make both, you still got to get a three, and you don't have that much time left. If you were to foul anybody, Clavel would be the person to foul. She's only a 41% free throw shooter, 19 of 43 from the line. So it's interesting that she's even in the game right now for LSU. But as you said, they still have two fouls to go. But obviously, this is a great Georgia defensive team. They're going to go for the steal right off the bat. I definitely think they'll go for the steal. But at this point, the fouls to give. You foul as quickly as you can. So the, the least amount of time goes off the clock. Little Tamika Johnson inbounding gets it to Augustus. Jerome Baker's not found her. She still hasn't found her. Augustus showing her.
her ability, and they wasted four seconds. Andy Landers can't believe it. Well, that's way too much time. As soon as Augustus caught the ball, and Sherelle Baker saw that she did not have the steal, she needs to foul her right away. Yeah, especially because at that point, it doesn't matter. Augustus is a great free throw shooter, but she's not going to go to the line. You just have to foul her. Exactly. You see the frustration there on Andy Landers' face. 9.4 seconds left to go as Georgia has one timeout to go. More great ESPN coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues tomorrow. The Mid-East Regional Final, Duke and Minnesota at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, followed immediately by Tennessee and Stanford from the Midwest. ESPN, your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. Connecticut already about to get on that plane from Bradley International to go down to New Orleans. And the rest of the bracket will be filled out by tomorrow. About this time tomorrow, we will know the matchups. And you see Connecticut waiting for the winner of Duke, Minnesota. The winner of this game will play the winner of Stanford, Tennessee. One more foul to give. Just 16 fouls against Georgia. You see they're grabbing Augustus. There you go. That's what they needed to do the first time. But Kendrick grabbed her even before the inbounds. And that only ate up about a half a second. Simone Augustus is exactly who I want to go to the line if I'm Coach Hokey Chapman. Shooting almost 91%. Second in the NCAA from the free throw line, so you want her there? But even, of course, if she makes both, you still have enough time to get off a potential tying shot. Kim Augustus, oh, that's my baby. She's got that book with her. It looks like a scrapbook, but she keeps, where she goes, put another point down. That's her scorebook for her daughter. And again, as uh, I mentioned, Nell Fortner at halftime, she was, Simone Augustus at the age of 14, was on the cover of Sports Illustrated for Women under the title Next Michael Jordan Teen Phenom, and she has turned into a, a late teen phenom. Well, she has Simone Augustus is just showing a lot of emotion tonight and really carrying her teammates. Did you check out her mom? So excited how proud her parents must be. And she's just, she's just been incredible this whole tournament. I mean, she's leading the tournament in scoring. She's shooting at, at such a tremendous clip from the field, and, and uh, she's carried them. Simone is from Baton Rouge, where LSU is located. Went to Capitol High School. Christy Thomas looking on in what she hopes is not her final collegiate game. The only senior on this Georgia roster. But if Augustus makes it, Georgia should have time to get off that potential three-point game-tying shot. Simone has tied her career high with 29 points. She got that career high about 48 hours ago in the upset victory over Texas. And this tells you, talk about a big game player, you get your career high in the, in the Sweet 16, and then you tie it or exceed it in the Elite Eight. She's just a sophomore. Oh, man. <laughs> it's incredible. That career high is going to be busted a few more times. She misses the free throw, so Georgia can win it with the three, but they're running out of time. Hardrick loses the ball going down. LSU grabs it. And for the first time in the history of LSU women's basketball, they are going to the final four. Unbelievable. Unbelievable for LSU. Simone Augustus carried them. We said she had to have a big night for them to win. Tied the career high with 29. Congratulations to the LSU Lady Tigers. Their first ever Final Four. And Andy Landers did a wonderful thing there, going over and hugging the distraught Janice Hardrick, who fell down with the basketball. Sue Gunner, this goes down officially as the 1,015th game in which she's been a head coach, and now she's going to a Final Four. Let's head down to Jimmy Dykes. Pokey Chapman, I know it says interim beside your name, but that was not interim pressure you dealt with for 40 minutes tonight. You no, know, I can't take any credit for that. That's the key. We did not execute the first half. We didn't execute the last ten, the first 10 minutes of the second half. But we came out victorious. These kids deserve it. I'm so proud of them. But, Gunner, we miss you. We love you. And, Daryl, I'm bringing the kids home to New Orleans. How about the play of Simone Augustus? She took over for you. Was that the game plan, or did you just say, hey, go get it done for us? You know, Simone's always the game plan, but we play off of Simone. Doesn't necessarily mean she's going to shoot the ball. But when she gets touches, she draws a lot of attention. Can I go celebrate now? Terrific job, Thank Pokey. <laughs> yes, go celebrate, Pokey, and go celebrate, Sue Gunner, back in Baton Rouge. We will see you in New Orleans. LSU wins at 62-60.
This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. LSU going to the Final Four. We go to Sports Center. Sports Center on TV alongside Stuart Scott. To watch their team try to make history. Isis Tillis controlled the tip for Duke. Minnesota opens man to man. And